Hello, everybody. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma with Come On Now, the podcast. We are in Combat Corner, and we have an outstanding show for you tonight. We have the BKFC featherweight champion of the world coming off of a monster victory last weekend over Brian El Gallo Duran in Hollywood at the Hard Rock. Sold out the biggest crowd ever for a BKFC fight. Um, Kai Stewart, thank you for being here with us. Tell us about that fight. I mean, that was an outstanding, outstanding performance. That fight was monumental for me. You know, the, the announcers, the commentators, Sean Wheelock and uh, Chris Lights out Lytle, at the very end, they said, who in bare knuckle fights like Kai Stewart? And the answer is nobody. Kai Stewart is in a world of his own. He has found a stride. He's really doing what he needs. Like, I'm revolutionizing the sport because, yeah, I it, it's bare knuckle boxing. It's bare knuckle. It's not bare knuckle boxing. It's bare knuckle fighting. And I'm really embodying the fighting. I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning how to box a little bit better, but there is a lot of fighting tactics in there. And I, I'm revolutionizing the sport, and I, I'm just going to keep taking it one fight at a time, and I'm going to continue to show that I can get better and better and better and better. So when you when I saw you at the – I saw you, you know, guys doing the um, initial stare down when you got to Hollywood. First off, you embodied Miami. Oh yeah. You had the open shirt, like the sunglasses. You went Miami Vice hardcore. I love it. When he slapped the sunglasses off of your face, what did it take to keep from jumping <laughs> across? You know, it's business as usual. The loudest one in the room is typically like it, if you go out to the bar, the loudest the loudest guy in the room is usually once the fight breaks out, is usually the guy that gets his ass kicked. And I knew, you know, we got to be cool, calm, collected. We got we can't let our emotions get the best of us, which is what he was doing. Um, and all of this is in hindsight. Ma- major respect to brian duran like after the fight um he he earned my respect he hit me the hardest i've ever been hit um so hats off to him so this is all my opinion before we fought um but it's like i i knew you just keep 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 on him you take a step forward he just did something to you at least take a step forward where there's no step backwards where i come from you know uh as a wrestler you get taken down you just gotta get up and keep moving forward and that's that's what i did all week long because i knew that i had i had everybody against me again um i think online and back in montana they were rowdy for me but i was um relatively very alone down there with my with my small crowd so you come into i mean this is now you you beat louis lopez for the belt Mm -hmm. you beat howard davis and now you beat brian duran el gallo i mean you've now beaten the top three guys, you know, oh, obviously yeah. you're number one. You've yeah. taken them all out. Like it's, it's a hit list, man. And yeah. each fight you come in as the underdog. Do you like that? You like being I, the I, un- like they're overlooking you and like, man, I'm going to show these people what it's about. I, I really, I really do, you know, and the rankings don't really matter. None of that matters. What matters is what happens on fight night. And whenever I'm an underdog, it just means that, uh, my friends and family that are going to place bets on me are going to make more money. So, uh, I, you know, I think, I think this weekend we crossed a bridge to where we're going to have, they're going to have to start betting parlays to make it worth it because <laughs> I think I'm going to be a pretty heavy favorite from here on out. Uh, I, I think I've earned it. And, you know, if I, if I, I say this now, but if I end up an underdog, like I said, it doesn't matter. All that matters is people are going to be making a lot more money off of me. And I'm Vegas's worst nightmare right now. Their worst fucking nightmare. So your your background is wrestling. I saw you wrestled in high school. You were a state champion in high school. You wrestled in college some. Do you take that wrestling background? Because bare knuckle fighting, I mean, there's a lot of, I know it's not grappling per se, but mm-hmm. when you get in that dirty boxing area, there's there's a yeah. grappling component to it. Take it a step further. It's uh, I, I was a, I loved Greco-Roman wrestling. Greco wrestling was uh, a very fun part of my life because uh, in Montana we didn't have a lot of Greco opportunities. So whenever we did it, we knew we we 
didn't train Greco like everybody else. We didn't have a whole season for it. So it was always strictly fun. And that was my favorite part of wrestling season was having fun. We didn't, we weren't worried about wins and losses. We were just looking to throw people for five points. And if we, even if we lost and we got that fucking awesome throw and, but Greco Roman is all upper body. I can't touch your legs. I can't take you down, which is right here. We're, we're getting, digging under hooks. We're ducking under, which I did three times to Duran. I ducked under and got, uh, took his back. And he, if we were in Greco wrestling, let me tell you, he would have went for five. He, he would have been, it, it would have been, uh, just quite a spectacular thing to see. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, Greco Roman is as close to a street fight as you're going to get without actually punching someone in the face. So having Greco Roman as my, my favorite background in wrestling is, uh, definitely transferred over and, uh, nothing will quite be like a wrestler's mindset. And once a wrestler, whether it's in the business world or, um, in the athletic world, once a wrestler puts his mind to something, it, there's no stopping us. Wrestlers are always going to do it best. Uh, I mean, wrestling, I, I remember when I was in high school, that was a long time ago. Um, but when I was in high school, I had a, a, I was a senior in high school. I have a kid, guy who's a sophomore. He's probably 25 pounds lighter than me. And I didn't wrestle. And I tried to mess around with him. <laughs> and I, I tried to sprawl as far as I could. And after about the 25 seconds, he's just pushing. And push. I'm like, oh, gee. all right, we're done. <laughs> uh, it's like, the cardio yeah. wrestling is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. and obviously you take that into fights because from watching that fight, the, your last two fights is particularly, I mean, I think all of them, the last three that I saw, you seem to take guys into deep water and they seem to get tired and you seem to never stop. Yeah. And I, I think that's why Jimmy Rivera is a very, very good matchup for me next. I don't like, I, I sweep the division. There's no other poster child that bare knuckles trying to, I became the poster child. Like I became the king of the BKFC. So um, now it's just my job to beat whoever's next. And I think Jimmy Rivera is a very fun, intriguing matchup for me because he's been in five round, five, five minute round, f five round fights. Um, he's, he's, been in in deep water and that excites me it gives me the opportunity to break someone that on paper shouldn't like isn't breakable you know he's mm -hmm. gone he's gone uh rounds with all the uh ufc greats aljamain sterling peter young uriah, uriah Faber. he's been in there with everybody and i do think this is time for you know the young era beats the new era and i'm that guy and i i think jimmy rivera hats off to his career i'm glad that he has his uh police force academy uh pension ready uh because he's he's done whenever he fights me and i think he's gonna unfortunately be the guy that i put um put his lights out i think i'm going to put jimmy rivera's lights out and then I keep saying this after every fight and I thought like, yeah, it's every, I'm getting the respect I think that I deserve, but in the end I have to keep evolving and Jimmy Rivera is going to get it next. And then there's definitely no stopping me. Once I get this fight, it's over. Did you know that the next fight would be Jimmy Rivera? If you were coming away with a victory, did they let you know that? Or they just pop that in there on you and say, and throw him in the cage. I mean, you know, some people don't like when they just toss guys in the cage. Like, I just want to, I just defended my belt, man. Yeah. You got someone in here, like, and get him out of my damn cage. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 was all, I, I didn't, I assumed because Jimmy Rivera was who was, uh, who was supposed to sign a contract with me. And then in Albuquerque, I went down and Dave Feldman just told me that, that the fight doesn't make sense. Jimmy Rivera doesn't want it. And, um, I was like, okay. Um, and so I, I kind of wow. assumed, I assumed, but having him in the ring was definitely, uh, fuck, like, <laughs> damn, Jimmy Rivera really just came in here. Um, like, that's crazy because as a, uh, I, cause I was a UFC fan as a wrestler, you know, wrestlers yeah. tend to stick to the MMA and I don't want to disrespect BKFC. I'm, I'm bleeding black and gold. Like I, I am here to stay and, uh, Bare Knuckles is my favorite, but watching Bear, uh, MMA growing up, I watched Jimmy Rivera fight a hundred times. Like it, it's ridiculous um, that he's next, but it, it's life's full circle and I'm going to put his lights out. Like you, 
I'm still just learning how to box. I, I, I started boxing three years ago. Um, I never had any ambition, um, even in my MMA fights, to stand and bang with nobody. And now I'm sitting in front of Brian Duran, who is a, a savage, and I'm boxing. I'm, I'm sitting out there at distance, at range. Yeah, I'll close the distance, but I did, wasn't even really on his neck the entire fight, you know? You know, the, the, the first round, I thought he won the first round, but then I thought the next four, like you just, to me, you yeah. swept the, the next four. And once you turned on the gas, it was like he was on the ropes the entire, yeah. the entire, the remainder of the yeah. fight, he pretty much was on the ropes. Do you, do you, did you sense that was as you're, you know, as you're feeling him out and stuff like that? The game plan really was to weather the storm and then become the storm. And I yeah. became the storm, the, the whole rest of the fight. And, uh, that you know it, i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna circle back that that's also just why jim rivera is an intriguing fight he can go five rounds he's a tough nut to crack he's a tough break but i'm gonna break him i break people and uh i'm either gonna break him or put him out and you know i love breaking people it gives me goosebumps thinking about it but i think it's time for me to put somebody's lights out so i'm gonna, I'm gonna hit another area conor mcgregor is now a part owner of the bkfc what does that do for you as a 145 champion? I mean, how exciting. I mean, obviously things are already, you're seeing things probably in the background that are already happening because of Connor's presence. Cause I mean, you know, yeah. he is who he is. What are your thoughts as a champion at 145? And you know, would you ever ask him to come down and drop weight to 145? <laughs> um, abs- <laughs> so absolutely not. Um, uh, I, uh, I hate doing this because my camera's kind of hard to put back into place, so bear with me here. Yeah. I've had one one athletic poster growing up my entire life. Conor McGregor. That's that's badass, man. So I get to impress my idol. I like I am so grateful. He follows me on Instagram now. Uh, um he he messaged me. Uh that's dope. He messaged me two nights ago. Um, and life is good. Life is fucking good. Like, you know, I, uh, it's, it, it's crazy. The feeling of wanting to impress another, another person, you know, it's like, I really do just try to do me. I want to impress me, my family. I want to, uh, win that, but it feels really good to have my idol now being my boss and a mentor, because I think he's going to mentor us in, in character development. I think he's going to really help skyrocket BKFC and my confidence levels through the roof that he's following me. And he, like we we've DM'd back and forth. It's fun. like, I can't even contain myself right now. Um, it, it makes me giddy, but the job's not done because you, you know, once I, he wants my girlfriend has a car for every day of the week or whatever Conor McGregor said way back <laughs> when, you know, uh, once we have that, you know, and you know, maybe even invite McGregor onto my yacht one day, uh, awesome. then, then we know we've done it, but McGregor is doing great things for us. And, uh, uh, bare knuckles incredibly lucky to have him. Um, I'm very grateful to have him as one of my bosses and, uh, it, it's to the moon because I, I became that guy this weekend. I'm King Kai and I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to help take this. I'm going to blow this motherfucker up is what we're going to do. So, I mean, yeah, you know, when you think about it, we're in 2024 already. I mean, McGregor started about 2013 or 12 with something around 10 plus years ago. So you were what? 13, 14 years old. So, 12, yeah, if it was, 12, tw- if it was 2012, I was 12 years old. Years old. Um, so, I was born in 2000. Easy so, math. So you're um, watching like this guy, yeah. what, like you're at, when you're a kid, I mean, I remember my kid as a kid, my hero athlete was Ricky Henderson, a former baseball yeah. player. Like mm-hmm. and when I met him as a 12, 13, year, I was like, Oh my God, you know? And, yeah. You know, but even as an adult, you're like, shoot, I watched this guy growing yeah. up. Like this is the guy that, set the standard for the UFC yeah. and just change the game for all these fighters. And like being a featherweight world champion now, and his <laughs> was a featherweight world champion. Yeah. And, um, you know, technically I'm like Jose Aldo was the, um, f- was the first 145 champion yeah. for the UFC. So technically I'm in that route, but, um, you know, Connor was a very, very, very lovely, great second. And, uh, I, I want I want to have that effect. I want people to say I want to be like Kai Stewart one day. I, I I want people to say that like that. That's what it's all about. It's giving back to the next generation. 
Was it was it your first time down here in uh, South Florida for the fight? No, so I went to the Delray card that got canceled, and mm-hmm. then after I won, I faced off with Dat Win down in in at the Hard Rock Live, like basically one year anniversary. I think it was June twenty first mm-hmm. or June twentieth was the fight, and um, yeah, what what a wild ride! My the last year has been crazy. It's been well, so crazy. How did you get in? So I knew. I mean, I saw that you had the three BKFC fights. Then you had an MMA fight, mm-hmm. and now it's just all BKFC. How did you get into BKFC? What? What? what, what I mean, as a wrestler, did was it? So I, what, I had ten amateur. I had ten amateur MMA fights, and I was starting to really pick up pace. And like we knew, we kind of knew that I was going to make a living out of this. I was still going to school to um to be a sports management. Um, business major, uh, psychology major. I was double majoring. Um, still didn't graduate because I, I dropped everything for the once they offered the world title. I dropped everything, but um, I was an amateur MMA fighter. I I, I did very very good. I, I talked my shit, and as a wrestler from Montana, people rallied behind me, especially the wrestling community. So I became a ticket seller. And yeah. apparently bare knuckle ticket sales, like the, the Montana fighters that were on the card, weren't pimping the tickets. So they called me and they gave me an opponent. I was uh, not opposed to fighting, you know, bare knuckle. I've never been in a street fight in the ring or out, outside the ring or cage. Like, you know, bare, my, my bare knuckle debut was my first bare knuckle fight ever. Wow. Um, so it really wasn't on my bingo card to do. And, um, but the, the price that they, they offered me was enough to get, to buy a puppy, uh, a boxer puppy. <clears throat> and, uh-huh. you know, I, I did it for the dog, but then I realized that I just, I got that dog already in me. So, um, we, uh, uh, I just sent it bare knuckle liked me. They came back to great falls and I really sold because my debut was four, uh, three and a half hours away from my hometown. And it was before I, my name got bigger. So like, it was hard for me to get those ticket sales. And now I could sell out any arena in Montana. I really could. So I'm, I'm grateful. I'm ready. So you were born in Kansas, correct? Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did you end up in Montana? I just family, my mom's my, my mom's family. Yeah, my mom's family lived up here, and uh, um, we we moved up here whenever I was five years old. We had okay. a, like a one year a one year stint in Kansas again, and we we didn't like it, so we moved back to Montana. And Montana's been home ever since, and. Uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Montana is the last best place, and I embody the Montana lifestyle. I hunt, I fish, I I love camping. I love the the being able to look in the air and see the stars every single day. Um, it, it's just there's a lot to be grateful for living in Big Sky Country. Yeah, we we don't have stars in South Florida. It's too many lights yeah. from the city. You didn't, like if you yeah. looked up, you're like, man, there's no stars in here. You can't even see. I know. Them. I noticed that down it's there. Wild. My girlfriend didn't know that because she's from like a smaller Washington city, yeah. um, in Washington State. So uh, she was still able to see see the stars. So she she grew up seeing the stars, and we always yeah, looked up, and they're like, no, no stars. And we were there for a week, and we didn't see them once. So no. Nah. Definitely <laughs> puts, it, it puts life and the beauty of nature into perspective for sure. What's the biggest fish you've caught since your your or, or biggest game that you've hunted? I I got I did I got a black bear. I got wow. a couple deer, antelope. Very basic hunting. I never had a dad to fucking show me what to do mm-hmm. or where to go. So uh, um, it's all been just fucking great people, great people that I've met along the way. Hunting is more of what I'm going to start getting into. I, I'm uh, I think I'm going to be partnering with a a certain company. I'm not going to release it yet, but once mm-hmm. I partner with this company and and uh, and I have the access to uh, all of their information, it, it's going to change. But fishing is definitely like my favorite and the biggest fish i've ever caught was a a a white sturgeon out in washington um i i caught a uh 11 footer and uh yeah my second (laughs) big my second biggest was a uh 49 and a half pound catfish in oklahoma and then we did a um uh i I caught a sailfish in florida um Mm -hmm. Whenever I was there for the Delray Beach card. Okay. Um, but all the rest, we, we, we fish for catfish, sturgeon, a smaller sturgeon, shovel-nose sturgeon in Montana, and then uh, a lot of walleye trout. Um, 
catfish, bass, northern pike, carp, anything that'll bite my hook. Uh, the fish are fucked this summer. I told everybody <laughs> once I win, once I win the belt, once I win the belt, and I get to spend the summer fishing, the fish are fucked. <laughs> are, you, are you gonna be out there every day? <laughs> Um, we're heading out there as soon as I'm off the phone. We're gonna head out there and catch some fish. So, um, I, do you know yeah, when the next? Go ahead. No, go for it. No. Do you know when you're? Do you know when the fight's gonna be scheduled with Rivera? Do you know where? Any idea? Nope. 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 And nope. I did say I was told I would get a call sometime. Uh, either I couldn't remember if he said late this week or next week. Um, and we're going to probably make a game plan, uh, historically, if we look into the, my past, um, my fights have been eight months to six months apart. Um, as a title holder, I, they've been exactly six months apart. I fought in June, December, now June, and I would love that timeline. Maybe I would love October, November, December. Uh, I do love my summers off, especially cause Montana, we, we only have so much time to do fun stuff so um i feel like it's rightful as the champion especially three time defending now um that i get my summer off and then we're gonna we're gonna hit it back hard but like i'm back in the gym on monday so i'll be ready to go but i, I want to be uh um i want to enjoy life because that's in the end enjoying life is what it's all about uh, so i'm i'm hoping for october november december any of those months yeah. would be perfect for me there, there's the salt lake city card i think that's a little bit too soon because september 6th i'd have to hop into camp like in two weeks and yeah. you know this won't even be healed in two weeks so i have to be smart i have to protect my brain uh but you know money talks so of course um it's it's like money talks and i i i do bleed black and yellow and if david feldman has a plan for me I, um i'm gonna trust it because he's he had a plan for bare knuckle and look what it's well look what's happening to it so I, I i'm here to trust the people that on paper they they know more than me so um but hopefully october november december we're, we'll be good to go Speaking of Dave Feldman and, and BKFC, how ex how exciting is it to be a part of an organization that's basically just started and is it's only five years and is exploding, and you being the champion at featherweight and with the personality that you bring, you know, with everything that's going on, how exciting is that? Just as a general, like I'm a part of something huge that's big that's going to become huge like i'm actually going to be getting the belt tattoo i think i'm going to get a belt actually latched around my leg uh um and uh, and it's because i'm grateful that i'm i right now i'm the youngest champion in history which is the same as john jones i believe uh john jones was 23 i was 22 so i love making that Ooh. comparison i don't want to i don't i don't want to jinx nothing i don't want to be that guy because i have the utmost respect for the greats of the sport and yeah. i don't want to i don't want to I don't want to compare myself too early, but there is a lot of early comparisons and uh, world champion at 22 years of age, the inaugural BKFC featherweight world champion. Now I've defended it twice. I'm on number, th I'm on my title fight number four. So literally over af um, after this fight, over half of my fights are title fights, you know, and yeah. I, that's crazy to me to think about. So it, I'm, I'm the utmost the utmost great like grateful for everybody in bkfc everybody that's got me this far my team my girlfriend she gave up three i went to spokane for three weeks that we spent apart during this camp and um it's like she puts up with a lot there's just so much to be grateful for i don't want to get caught up in in the in the stats of it but it, it's down Hundred years down the road, people are gonna remember Kai Stewart was the inaugural BKFC featherweight world champion, and it's crazy. That's just insane to me. No, that's that's absolutely awesome, man. You know, it, it, I got into BKFC. I saw my first BKFC fight when I um, it was in Hollywood a couple of years ago when Tiago Alves fought, and then um, it was he was he fought, uh, and then Hector Lombard fought. And then Laurent, uh Hunt comes in the ring. That was and, after the Joe Riggs fight. I have a story yeah, Joe, about that. Yeah, and he, and he, and he, that's why I asked you about when people come in the ring. Like, Lombard's known around here being a little crazy, you know? Yeah. He socks him in the face. I mean, he ends up losing the fight when they fought. But yeah, tell me the story. 
So Joe Riggs uh, was my is, is still my biggest hater. His worst nightmare is collecting um, uh, compound interest right now. Um, he was Louis Lopez's coach. He came to my uh, I, I went to his gym whenever he came into town because we're a small town. A UFC guy um, makes is a gym owner. Cool. I try it out. I leave the gym, go back to Team Wolfpack with my with my original team, and he blew up absolutely blew up and he spread rumors saying i i stole his wec belt out of his trophy case he um he called my girlfriend an ugly bitch to her face and all that but he also fucking um assaulted me and my right eye i had to pull out of a fight because it got injured and it was on it was a week before the fight um we were at another fight promotion he stepped on my shoe i said dude are you fucking childish and he fucking uh he fucking hit me and his thumb went into my eye um and what happened with hector lombard it was pretty ironic don't you think yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, honestly, like, I, I really, truly, I try to be a good person. I try to be the bigger person. Um, Joe Riggs is the only person that still, um, there's just, he needs to be a man and, and apologize for, because he, I lost thousands of dollars in sponsorships because of that man lying about me. Um, oh, wow. So, so it's like any, t- any chance I get to tell that little story, um, I'm taking it because, um classic instant i was sitting in my bed at home this was uh before my bkfc debut even happened and i was just like man uh as soon as that happened i was like holy fuck this is a sign that i should go to bare knuckle and fucking become a world champion and i fucking laughed it off and went to bed because i didn't want to do this shit and then a couple months later they fucking come to montana and what do you know what do you know so I actually rewatched the fight with Lopez and I mean, you had the interview and then I heard the interview where you mentioned the beef and I'm like, okay, you just told us the story of the beef. What was it like winning that belt at home in Montana? Yeah. So. It, and, then with, with, and, and with his backstory beyond that, I mean, that's even it's, ice it's great. Tank. Like, well, Joe Riggs left town. I literally ran, I literally ran him out of town. He's back in wherever he's at. He's gone. Wow. Um, but it, I was able to sell tickets, so I sold a, a lot of money. You know, the the crowd the crowd was electric because of the lies Joe Riggs spread about me. That crowd was half against me. I like believe it or not, it was half and half. Half went for Louis, half went for me. And whenever I went out there and I got booed so bad, it, there was a little bit of like, holy fuck! I thought it was just a select few, but this is deeper than that. But by the end, they were all cheering for me, you know. Uh, no matter what happened, Montana that night won a world title. So it, it was a really cool night for us. Uh, and But it also proved that I sold that arena out. I just needed a bigger arena for them to come back to Great Falls. And I can sell even more. And um, that's why I'm hoping maybe a little Jim will come up to Montana uh, and get a good old country ass whooping because that, that's what's coming his way. Last last question. I know you got stuff to do and go. Got to go catch some fish right now. Um, but confidence levels. You go into a title fight. You you win that title. To me, of the three fights that you've had for the belt, that was the toughest one. It looked like the toughest one, like the closest to me. Comparatively, I thought you dominated in the Howard Davis fight. You dominated in this fight last last week. How has your confidence grown just from winning that fight to where you are now? Um, it boils back to the quote, trust the process. Um, I, I have a job to do when loser draw that night, I would have left the, the building with a smile on my face. And I'm glad Duran did too. He earned that smile. He, um, he earned every dime that he made that night in ticket sales. Like what a guy. And, uh, but we have a job and it goes in there. Sometimes you go to work and you have a bad day, but guess what? In the end, you still get paid and you're still going to wake up the sun is going to come out tomorrow and you go right back you get your ass back to work so um the confidence has always been there for myself i mean i have um i believe tattoo um mm-hmm. it, you I believe in yourself and anything is possible and uh but my belief and trust and confidence in the process and the process of having an actual team around me and uh, having a nutritionist having dl training systems um, having Luigi as my nutritionist, I got to shout him out by name. Um, but having a, a real management company, Jordan and Oren with KO reps, like I'm, I'm so grateful that, um, 
and confident in the process. And now I have a team, a real solid team around me. And <laughs> this is the first fight with an actual team. Look at like, I'm going to get better and wow. better and better and better. Everything else I did on, for the most part, my own with a very small team. I had my coach, my girlfriend who was my primary uh, mitt holder. Um, and it's like, we have a real team now. And, that's what we're confident in because the confidence has always been here. I've, I've all, I've always believed even against the number one guys in the country in wrestling, I would walk on that mat knowing and think that I could win. And I did win big matches in my life. So, um, you got to just trust the process, baby. Well, one more thing before we go, are you, no, in the you're hockey? good. You're good, bro. Are you in the hockey? hockey? Yeah. I, to be honest, I, I mean, do I want to go to an NHL game one day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I don't really watch any sports. However, my we do cover – my co-host in our podcast covered hockey and the Cups and everything. Um, in the Triple P podcast, Poor Puff Predict, the Tweak and Kai show. So, okay. uh, um, But uh, I do want to go to a hockey game. I, I think the concept of hockey and I think the, the, the grit and the grittiness of hockey players is amazing. But I'm just I I don't have time to watch sports, unfortunately. No, because we just won the Stanley Cup down here yesterday against Edmonton. Florida which was, did. Yes, the Florida that... Panthers won two to one. Game seven. The places. I mean, I had a couple of friends that went to the game, and you know, I've been to the Heat, the Heat for the finals, Miami Heat, but I've never been to a Panthers really even a playoff game because they rarely ever went until the last three years. They got pretty darn good, and that that's super good. Yeah, hell yeah, amazing. go Florida. Now, now Flor- think about. Flor- Think about this. People can't even ice skate down here. <laughs> Bro, I know. That that like my my wrestling coach, his dad, whenever he won a uh um an uh his all American status in college, uh he's from Delray Beach, Florida. His dad was like, You you're an all American from Delray Beach, Florida. <laughs> you know? It's so uh yeah, it's so funny hearing sports stories from Florida because it is like that. But I love the grittiness, man. So congrats to Florida on that. No, it, it's a lot of fun because we have a parade. I think the parade's on Sunday. I don't know why they would oh, yeah. put it on Sunday, but yeah. you know, I'm trying to get out to the parade. But I'm having know, my uh I'm having my first public outing um in Great Falls on Thursday. Awesome. Um, we're going to, we're going to go to the club and the, the club, um, we're going to go have a club night at the, at the place closest to a club downtown. And there's going to be a beer pong tournament. There's going to be fucking food. There's going to be fucking alcohol where I'm going to be the higher than fucking giraffe pussy. Like it's going to be fucking crazy. I, I can't wait. I love a good, I love a good, uh, celebration. Did you have a club night here after your win? Um, we had a casino night. We went and fucking okay. we went and fucking had some roulette. Like that was that was a fun night. No, I did uh, not win. That's I had not a desi- great time though. <laughs> it's not designed for any, for us to win. <laughs> I know. I had a great time though. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But yeah, bro. Hey, anytime. Like I know Thank I was you. hard to fucking contact and oh, nah. like if fight week was tough for me, but um, I definitely want to come back on anytime you want to talk. Let, let's just make sure we schedule it and uh, we'll yes, we'll get sir. going from there because uh, you're, you're a fun guy, fun, fun show. Nice show. G- a lovely background. Um, my coach, my DL training system, strength and conditioning coach is a Miami Dolphin fan. So um, I'm a diehard Dolphins fan. We're the, we're the only one that hasn't won a championship in my lifetime. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, get her I, done. I got a Let's Panthers, go. the Heat won the Marlins, and I, I'm a Yankees fan also. I'm a diehard Yankees fan, so I'm a Yankee. But the Dolphins can can barely win a playoff game, so they got to yeah, get it done. Like, they'll they'll but, get it done eventually. It, it'll come. It'll come. But I, I, I greatly appreciate this. You're our first interview for Combat Corner. I've been doing individual, just talking to the mic and stuff like that and trying to get into these events, you know, get going with combat. Because I love MMA. I love boxing. Hell yeah. KFC. Cool. I love all of it. I wouldn't Stay in do contact. It. I'm gonna try to get some people your way. Just uh, shoot, you. shoot me, shoot me a DM, and then uh, I'll, I'll be paying attention. And we will. Uh, I'll try to get a couple of my UFC buddies on. I have a fucking slew of bare knuckle guys that I can get you on. So uh, you. that I I understand their time is money. So it'll of it's course. their that it, in the end it'll be them. But uh, I'm pretty sure if I was like, yo, fucking give this guy 15, 20 minutes, they'll, they'll be they'll be good for it. I appreciate you, brother, man. Again, oh, yeah. thank you, King Kai Stewart, BKFC featherweight champion. 
He's fighting Jimmy Rivera next. What day, when, where? I'd love to see it in Hollywood again where it won't be cold for you. But, I know. You, you know, let's get it done, man. Thank you so let's much, brother. Let's get it done, bro. We'll talk very, very soon. Peace out. All right. Peace out, brother. Thank you. That was Kai Stewart, the BKFC featherweight champion. I want to thank him again for coming on with us on Combat Corner. We're going to be doing a lot more of this. Interviews with some great fighters. We appreciate Kai being our first fighter interview after a monster win over an amazing fighter in Brian El Gallo Duran. Look, Duran El Gallo is a hell of a fighter. Hell of a fighter. And, I mean, that was a an unbelievable fight. You know, so those two guys put on a show. If you have not been watching Bare Knuckle FC, you need to do it. Because it is amazing and exciting as hell. That's it for today. Come on now. The podcast. Follow us. Instagram, Twitter. I'm sorry, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Come on now podcast. And on uh, Twitter, X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell. So you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.